Our operations resulted in 80 neutralized terrorists, while 304 of them were arrested. Troops also arrested 152 perpetrators of oil theft while rescuing 44 kidnapped hostages. In the South-South, troops denied the oil theft of an estimated sum of over 345 million naira. Furthermore, troops recovered 112 assorted weapons, over 898 assorted ammunition, the breakdown of which is as follows. We recovered two general purpose machine gun, one HK-21 rifle, 14 AK-47 rifles, eight pump action guns, four locally fabricated rifles, eight locally made pistols, over 239 rounds of 7.62 millimeter NATO, and 431 rounds of 7.62 millimeter special ammunition, among others. In the Niger Delta, troops destroyed eight dugout pits. We also destroyed 11 boats, 46 storage tanks, seven vehicles, 84 cooking ovens, 356 drums. These drums are used to put the products and 20 illegal refining sites. Troops also recovered over 80,000 liters of stolen crude oil, over 239,000 liters of illegally refined AGO, otherwise known as diesel, 5,000 liters of DPK, otherwise known as kerosene, and over 10,000 liters of PMS, otherwise known as petrol. Now we can look at the operations across the country by beginning with the Northeast where we have Operation Hadden K. Troops of Operation Hadden K arrested suspected terrorist collaborators in Igala, Mungunu, and Kukawa local government areas of Bono State. Troops ambushed terrorists also in Goza and Kaga local government areas of Bono State. Following troops' activities, ter terrorists surrendered to troops in Goza local government area of Bono State. Additionally, troops conducted fighting patrols in Goza, Bama, in Gazai, Kaga, Marte, and Moba local government areas, all in Bono State. Furthermore, troops arrested suspected kidnappers and false kidnapping incident in Gulani and be a local government area of Yobe and Bono State, respectively. Troops also arrested and neutralized terrorists in Konduga and Madagali local government area of Bordeaux and Adamawa State, respectively. Additionally, troops conducted raid operation and destroyed improvised explosive device in Kukawa and Goza local government area of Bono State. 
significantly between the 1st to the 5th of December, troops in separate operations conducted offensive operation to terrorist enclave in the following locations, Goza, Bama, Ingazai, Kaga, Marte, and Moba local government areas, all in Borno State. During these operations, troops made contact with the terrorists. Following a firefight, troops neutralized 17 terrorists and rescued five kidnapped hostages. Troops recovered two general purpose machine guns, four AK-47 rifles, two locally fabricated rifles, four magazines, 93 rounds of 7.62 military special ammunition, among other items. Additionally, on the 5th of December, troops in conjunction with hybrid forces raided terrorist enclave in Goza local government area of Bono State. Troops made contact with the terrorists and following a firefight, troops neutralized three terrorists, recovered two AK-47 rifles, 20 rounds of 7.62 millimeter special ammunition, among other items. Overall, troops of Operation Haddon K neutralized 31 terrorists, arrested 16 of them, and rescued five kidnapped hostages. Troops also recovered two general purpose machine guns, nine AK-47 rifles, two locally fabricated rifles, over 130 rounds of 7.62 meter special ammunition, among other items. Let's now move over to the North Central, where we have Operation Safe Heaven. Troops of Operation Safe Heaven arrested suspected criminals in Zango Kataf and just east local government areas of Kaduna and Plateau states, respectively. Troops also raided a suspected illegal arms factory in just south local government area of Plateau state. Additionally, troops arrested suspected criminals and illegal miners in Barkinladi local government area of Plateau State. Furthermore, troops arrested suspected kidnappers and foiled kidnapping incident in Bocos, just east, Riom and Barkin Lady local government areas, all in Plateau State. Troops also rescued kidnapped hostages in Sangha local government area of Kaduna State. Significantly, on the 29th of November, following credible information, troops raided suspected illegal arms factory in just south local government area of Plateau State. The factory was operating from the residence of one Davo Yakubu. He claimed the workshop belonged to his son. We are investigating it and will keep you updated with the outcome. Also, on the 29th and the 30th of November, troops 
in separate operations. Radiated a, dis a distress, responded to a distress call on kidnapping activities in Riom and Barkinladi local government areas of Plateau State. Troops rescued three kidnapped victims or hostages in the course of that operation. Overall, troops of Operation Safe Heaven neutralized one terrorist, arrested three, and rescued eight kidnapped hostages. Troops also recovered four locally fabricated rifles, three then guns, two grenade belts, 21 mobile phones, among other items. Still, in the North Central, we can move over to Operation Wild Stroke, which is in the North Central. Troops of Operation Wild Stroke conducted a fighting patrol to Takum local government area of Taraba State. Troops also responded to terrorist activities in Ukum, local government area of Benue State. Furthermore, troops responded to suspected terrorist activities in Logo, local government area of same Benue State. Additionally, troops conducted raid operations and arrested illegal miners in Lafia and Karu, local government areas of Nasarawa State. Meanwhile, troops also conducted fighting patrols and foiled attacks on civilians in Katsina Ala and Logo, local government area of Benue State. They arrested suspected criminals and armed militia in Katsina Ala and Logo of Benue State. Significantly, on the 3rd of November, troops responded to distress call on suspected terrorist attack in local, local, local government area of Benue State. Troops made contact with this terrorist, and following a firefight, three of the terrorists were neutralized, and troops recovered one locally fabricated pistol, among other items. Similarly, on the 5th of December, following a tip-off, troops raided a kidnapper's hideout in Lafia local government area of Nasarawa State. While troops made no contact with these kidnappers, troops exploited the general area and recovered two AK-47 rifles, two locally fabricated rifles, seven AK-47 magazines, among other items. Overall, troops of Operation Wild Stroke neutralized seven terrorists in the course of their operations. They arrested 12 of them and rescued 28 kidnapped hostages. Troops also recovered two AK-47 rifles, two locally fabricated rifles, among other items. Now, we can cross over to the Northwest, where we have Operation Hadarin Daji. Troops of Operation Hadarin Daji rescued kidnapped hostages in Kangara local government area of Katsina State. 
They also responded to terrorist activities between Shinkafi and Zurmi local government areas of Zamfara State. Additionally, troops had meeting engagements with terrorists in Jibia local government area of same Katsina State. Furthermore, troops responded to terrorist activities in Shinkafi and Zurmi local government area in Zamfara State, as well as Dan Musa local government area in Katsina State. Troops conducted fighting patrols and intercepted a notorious terrorist vehicle in Kangara and Dango, Wazagu local government area of Katsina and KB State, respectively. Significantly, on the 1st of December, troops responded to a distress call on terrorist activities between Shinkafi and Zurmi local government areas of Zamfara State. Troops made contact with the terrorists, and following a firefight, troops neutralized two terrorists and recovered one AK-47 rifle, eight rounds of 7.62 millimeter special ammunition, among other items. Similarly, on the 2nd of December, troops, while on patrol, made contact with terrorists in Jibia local government area of Katsina State. Following a firefight, troops neutralized one terrorist and recovered one HK-21 rifle, 90 rounds of 762 millimeter special ammunition, among others. Now, following intelligence and intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance by the air component of Operation Hadir in Daji, a terrorist enclave belonging to a terrorist leader, Audu Lakai, in Jibia local government area of Katina State was identified. The air component on the 3rd of December acquired and attacked the target with rockets and cannons. Battle damage assessment revealed several terrorists were neutralized and structures destroyed. Overall, troops of Operation Hadir in Daji neutralized four terrorists, arrested 12 of them, and rescued 11 kidnapped hostages. Troops also recovered one HK-21 rifle, 35 rounds of 7.62 meter special ammunition, among other items. Let's now move to Operation Wild Punch, which is still in the Northwest. Troops of Operation Wild Punch arrested a suspected criminal in Lokoja and Tafa local government areas of Kogi and Niger states, respectively. They conducted raid operation and rescued kidnapped hostages in Tafa and Rafi local government areas of Niger State. Troops also arrested suspected kidnappers and collaborators in Tafa in Niger State as well as the Abuja Municipal Center Area Council of the FCT. Significantly, on the 3rd of November,
troops in collaboration with operatives of the Department of State Security raided suspected terrorist hideout in Tafa local government area of Niger State. During the operation, troops arrested a terrorist with a suicide belt. He is cooperating with ongoing investigation. Similarly, on the 4th of December, troops with hybrid forces, while on night patrol, arrested two suspected kidnappers in Abuja Municipal Area Council of the FCT. Similarly, on the 30th of November, the air component of Operation Hader Indaji conducted air interdiction on terrorist leader Alhaji Labai Enclave in Giwa local government area of Kaduna State. Intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance revealed the location to be active with terrorist activities. Subsequently, the target was attacked with rockets and cannons, and several terrorists were neutralized and structures destroyed. Overall, troops of Operation Wild Punch neutralized 11 terrorists, arrested 23 of them, and rescued two kidnapped hostages. Troops recovered two pop action guns, among, among other items. Rolling over to the south-south, where we have Operation Delta C. Troops of Operation Delta C maintain the momentum against the activities of crude oil theft. Troops destroyed several illegal refining sites and recovered stolen products. Additionally, troops raided a suspected criminal hideout in Osimili South and Boki local government areas of Delta and Cross River states, respectively. Furthermore, troops arrested suspected criminals and cultists in Uburbra and Udupani local government areas in Cross River State and Wari South local government areas of Delta State, respectively. Troops recovered over 80,000 liters of stolen crude oil. They recovered over 239,000 liters of illegally refined AGO and 5,000 liters of DPK. Additionally, troops apprehended 124 suspected cruel oil thieves Troops discovered and destroyed two dugout pits, 11 boats, 15 storage tanks, among other items. Significantly, on the 2nd of December, following a tip-off, troops raided suspected criminal hideout in Boki local government area of Cross River State. During the operation, troops arrested two suspected Ambazonian fighters. They are in custody and investigation is ongoing. Overall, troops of Operation Delta Save recovered over 204,000 liters of stolen crude oil, over 251 1,000 liters of illegally refined AGO, 5,000 liters of DPK, 
and over 10,000 liters of PMS. Additionally, troops discovered and destroyed eight dugout pits, 22 boats, 46 storage tanks, among other items. Furthermore, troops apprehended 140 suspected oil thieves and recovered 35 assorted ammunition, among other items. Now to the southeast, where we have Operation Udoka. Troops of Operation Udoka conducted stop, stop and search operation in Indimili South, local government area of Anambra State. And they arrested suspected criminals in Ishelu local government area of Ebony State. Troops also intercepted suspected indigenous people of Biafra and their Eastern Security Network cohorts recruits in Aguata local government area of Anambra State. Additionally, troops raided criminal hideouts in Eda and Afiku, local government areas of Ebony State. Significantly, on the 28th of November, troops in conjunction with hybrid forces conducted stop and search operation in Indibili South, local government area of Anambra State. During that operation, troops intercepted a vehicle while the occupants fled on sighting them. Troops searched the vehicle and recovered two locally made pistols, four rounds of nine millimeter ammo, among other items. Similarly, on the 3rd and the 4th of December, following intelligence, troops in separate operations raided criminal hideouts in Eda and Afiku, local government areas of Boeing State. During the operation, troops arrested six suspected criminals. Following investigation, two among the suspects were revealed to be indigenous people of Biafra Amora and one Peter Irem, alias governor of Eda State. Troops also recovered one AK-47 rifle, 18 rounds of 7.62 millimeter special ammunition, among other items. Overall, troops of Operation Udoka neutralized two criminals, arrested 78 suspected indigenous people of Biafra and their Eastern Security Network cohorts and five kidnapped hostages. Troops also recovered one AK-47 rifle, six pump action guns, 18 rounds of 7.62 meter special ammunition, among others. Now, all the recovered items, the arrested persons, and the rescued hostages have been handed over to the relevant authority for further action, including prosecution. Now, from all that I have said in the course of this brief, it is clear that Here's what I can say. The armed forces of Nigeria is a professional force. And within our ranks and file, we have members from every part of this country. So whatever group is coming up 
and saying whatever calculations that they have imagined in their minds, I can tell you that it is faulty, it is in error, and it is unpatriotic. At this time, when we are in war, it is not just the military that is at war. The whole country is at war. And that is why I have severally said on this platform that there are more people that know something than those that see. And therefore, know something, say something, and let us, the military, do something about it. As for saying what we are going to do in regard to what has happened to prevent it from happening in future, I can assure you we'll, we will make sure that we get more training or make sure that we get more understanding of the processes and protocols involved to make sure that when something is seen, before the order is given to bomb it, it will be definitely 100% sure that that is what we are seeing and that is what is happening. But for now, we have encouraged communities to see something and say something. Tell us what you are seeing and it will help us in analyzing the threat that we see on the ground. Thank you very much. We will continue to conduct our operation consistent with international laws, which we have always done. We will continue to conduct our operations consistent with our rules of engagement, which we have always done. Our operations in the country are joint, meaning that we are operating in a joint environment where you have the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. When we talk of cooperation, we've not had it better than this. When we talk about the incident that happened, I can assure you that the military learns from its experiences and will continue to make improvements as we go along. It is an incident that has happened, and like I mentioned in my brief, we are determined to deal with it squarely. There will be need for protocols, there will be need for processes to be improved upon. And this, I assure you, we will put in place to ensure that in future we have near to zero occurrences. Thank you very much. Now, about the casualties, we heard from the the leader of the community, and the figure that he gave was close to 80. That is what he said. You can play the clip and listen to what he said. Close to 80, that's the figure of casualties that were buried. As for that which received treatment in the hospital, I recall the interview with the doctor, and he said, 71, after which one person died, making it 70. So we can say 81 killed and 70 receiving treatment. Thank you.
Let me switch to the left side now, if there are questions. Forces is committed to his duties of securing the country. In the conduct of operations, the military is very concerned about civilian casualties. And it is for this reason that we embark on extensive measures to avert such casualties. The military has shown determination. We have shown commitment to deal with this situation properly. Accordingly, the military will continue to take great measures to prevent civilian casualties in the course of our operations. Protecting civilians remains a vital part of our operations in order to promote greater security for all Nigerians. Thank you very much for your attention. And we will immediately swing on to the interactive sessions by taking questions from the floor. Good morning and welcome to today's media briefing. I will start uh, by saying that the ongoing military operations across the country are indeed in support of our national security interest. These operations are integral to the plan of focusing military pressure on terrorists, insurgents, and extremists in order to destroy them or force them to submission. Accordingly, the military remains focused to its core mission of creating a safe and secure environment for citizens by the total destruction of those perpetrating insecurity in the country. I would like at this juncture to observe that there has been significant media attention across the country owing to the sad incident of the bombing that occurred in Kaduna last Sunday I would like to say that the military stands with all those grieving as a result of the drone strike, as well as express our heartfelt condolences as a force over the losses. 